Our next waste material is also surprisingly abundant. This sugar source is pectin. Annually, hundreds of thousands of tons of fruit peel seeds and sugar beet pulp, a side stream of sugar production, pile up without high value utilization. Currently, this treasure is mainly a problem. It is used for landfills and dried for cattle feed, which is quite costly. In this example, we would like to demonstrate a biotechnology case in a chain of technologies patented by VTT, where we can turn this pectin feedstock into a platform chemical, which in turn can be further processed to numerous applications. In a recent publication, a team at VTT demonstrated an excellent route for making a precursor for bio-based polyesters from galactaric acid, also called music acid, which is originally made from pectin waste streams. And this is very exciting as we have been able to successfully show this process from lab scale now to kilogram scale. We have developed a route uh, using music acid to produce FDCA, which can be then used to make plastic bottles to replace uh, PET. So the FDCA is a furan dicarboxylic acid, which is a raw material for uh, polyethylene furanoate, which is a replacement uh, for uh, PET. The plastic PEF has actually better properties. So if we're looking at the barrier properties of the uh, of the plastic, uh, the oxygen uh, and the water barrier properties, they're all higher. So that would mean your plastic bottle, if this is your end product, which contains your soda, can actually stay on the shelves for a lot longer in the store than with the current PET plastics. So uh, a fossil-based plastic would be replaced by a superior product originating from waste streams. But let's go back to the biotech part, turning pectin into music acid, or galactaric acid. The first trials were made with filamentous fungus Trichoderma rese, which is a broadly used industrial microbe. You'll see, how did you go about? We made some genetic engineering to the strains. So we introduced into the strain the uranate dehydrogenase uh, enzyme activity, and in addition, we deleted the galacturonate reductase uh, gene. And this enabled then conversion of the galacturonic acid to galactaric acid in trichoderma rese. As the production levels uh, uh, were so good, uh, so we wanted to test how this uh, strain behaves in a large-scale fermentation. So we made a 300 liter fermentation and noticed that from this we could purify 2.8 kilograms of uh, galactaric acid. So a nice feature of the galactaric acid is that uh, with these production levels, it precipitates from the culture media. And we, in this, uh, these fermentations, we could achieve 65% uh, recovery and over 95% uh, purity for the galactaric acid. Okay, so with this successful experiment behind, you proceeded to go forward to make this into a one-pot reaction, a consolidated process. We used Asperger's niger, which naturally produces pectinases that break down the pectin to galacturonic acid monomers. Cells can then take up the galacturonic acid monomers, and then when modified, uh, engineered uh, genetically, they can convert it to, for example, galactaric acid. So instead of uh, using a bioprocess where we have to add extracellular enzymes, which is an additional cost, now the cell that produces the galactaric acid or the any end product, it also produces the enzyme that breaks down the waste material. The galacturonic acid pathway was characterized at VTT and has since been modified for production of different galacturonic derivatives. The conversion of degalacturonic acid to galactaric acid requires introduction of uranate rehydrogenase activity and deletion of competing pathways mediated by enzymes called GAA and GAC. Additional improvement of the production was achieved through the deletion of the pectin and D-galacturonate metabolism repressor GAAX and a cataboloid enzyme. Here you see a graph showing the production of galactarate from pectin using the genetically modified Aspergillus niger strain. We can see here that with the deletion of the side stream activities and the further conversion of the galactaric acid and the repressor molecule for the pectin utilization, 
we can observe a 60% improved production of galactarate. This is a very nice example showing that by streamlining the metabolism, cutting out different size streams and further in other ways also modifying the production host, we can generate significant increases in the production of the target molecule. The genetic engineering of the Aspergillus niger strain was achieved using the CRISPR technology. For this, we used the variant version of the CRISPR technology, not expressing the CRISCAS9 enzyme or the gRNAs from a plasmid in the host organism. Instead, we transformed the cells uh, with the Cas9 protein assembled in vitro with the guide RNAs. By using the Cas9 protein-based approach, we enable that the cells experience the Cas9 activity only for a short while. It's been shown many times and we've experienced it. Constitutive expression of Cas9 can be harmful for the cell viability. In the current case, we were able to multiplex the genetic uh, modifications in a way where in one go the cells were transformed with a Cas9 protein and then three sets of different guide RNAs that then resulted in deletion of the three target uh, genes in the host. And all this happened in one go. So in one transformation, we were able to generate a significantly engineered Aspergillus niger strain. So as a conclusion, we can uh, say that uh, we have shown that uh, we can valorize uh, the pectin rich waste using a fungal uh, bioprocess into a platform uh, chemical galactic acid in a very efficient way. Thank you, Jussi. And as we showed earlier, the galactaric acid or music acid is a very nice platform chemical, which can then be further used as a renewable component in polymers such as PEF, which in turn is a drop-in replacement for the current PET. Mm -hmm.